Lockdown two, in my view, is rubbish, for want of a better word. I can't understand why we've done it. I think it's totally unnecessary. And I can't understand why uh, a libertarian prime minister like uh, Boris Johnson has continually decided to follow the science rather than to act as what I keep telling you he should be, the chairman of the board, the chairman of the company, and look at both sides of the equation. All this came out very murkily yesterday in yesterday morning's papers. Headlines there bounced Boris Johnson into having to make a decision that uh, he wasn't due to make or due to announce, certainly, until Monday. I understand that he was going to think about it over the weekends, but somebody decided to um, wrong foot him and put this out into the public domain. So you have to make a very, very instant decision. That really is dirty politics, but politics is a dirty game. And if people want to get into politics, they have to expect to play dirty. I quite understand that. No problem at all. However, if that is against the will of the people, and there was a massive, massive campaign within the political uh, camp, the political group, to thwart the will of the people on the Brexit vote, that's going to happen again over coronavirus when 70 percent of this country in a recent poll said that they don't want any more lockdowns. Then I feel that once again, democracy is somehow being thwarted. OK, why did the prime minister suddenly change his mind? Two weeks ago, Michael Gove said no when asked the straightforward question, will there be a national lockdown imposed? He said, no, there won't. And guess what? Two weeks later, there is. So what uh, what led to that? I think what led to that is that when you look all around you, we're surrounded by Scotland, we're surrounded by Wales and across the English Channel, of course, we have the continent. All those countries suddenly went into renewed lockdown. And then all of a sudden we followed. Why? Why are we suddenly being led by the nose down the road to Armageddon? Why can't we make up our own mind what we want to do here? Why is it that people down in Devon, people down in Folkestone are saying, do you know how low our rates are, our rates of infection? They're down to sort of 34, 35 per whatever the figure is, compared to 500 in areas like Nottinghamshire. And yet the whole country has now been put down into lockdown. I think it's rubbish. I think it's absolutely outrageous. Now, you know the number on this show, don't you? Because I certainly do. So I read it off a bit of paper here. But no, I'm only joking, folks. It's 0344 499 1000. So the questions I'm asking you are this. Do you think that we're being put down into lockdown against the majority will of the country? Do you think lockdown is a good idea if it's going to be lifted on December the 2nd, when there will inevitably be another spike? It's bound to be another spike when it's lifted on December the 2nd. Will we then have to say, oh, we'll have to go into another emergency lockdown on Boxing Day or something like that? Because I can see it all happening now. Lockdown, lift lockdown. Expansion of COVID cases absolutely naturally is going to happen. Lockdown, lift lockdown, expansion of COVID cases and so on. It's just a cycle that will keep going on. There won't be a vaccine in March. That's pie in the sky. So that's uh, another question I want to ask you. Do you think lockdown is the solution? Because I don't. What I think is the solution is personal responsibility. I've said it a few times. I'll say it again because I'm trying to get it through to people's heads. That personal responsibility is a much better way to survive against lockdown than keep, uh, uh, I beg your pardon, against COVID than continually locking the country down. And also, we all know that, look, lockdown can kill people. Lockdown does kill people. Let me find out my facts here. Here we go, right? I've done my research and brought this to you. Lockdowns are lethal. They cause more deaths from cancer, heart disease and suicide, as well as job losses, bankruptcies, social disintegration and, mel and mental illness, particularly amongst the young who are at least r at risk from the virus. But if life closes down, so does the life of a young person who can't go to work, can't go to his job, can't take up his apprenticeship, OK? Um... In the April sunshine, when all this started, March, April, people were able to get out and sit in fields and parks and actually start enjoying a bit of time off work. It was almost like, you know, wow, isn't this great? This is new. It was novel. It's not a novelty now going into winter and facing the grim realities of massive financial recession. So I say lockdown does more harm than it does good. OK, and that's why I want to hear from you. I'll give you the number again. Oh, three, double four, four, double nine, one thousand. Is lockdown going to cause you more problems than give you the help that the whole country needs 
to, to, to try and get us over the pandemic. Lockdown is not the way to get over the pandemic. Straightforward action is the way. And we need a strong economy. I keep hearing from the people who are on the lockdown lobby, OK, oh, well, you know, if you've got sick people, you can't have a healthy health service. No, no, it doesn't work like that. Less than 1% of people in this country are affected at the moment by COVID, OK? That's the situation. So what I'm saying to you is that you can have a healthy health service because not many people, fortunately, are being disabled by it, OK? I'm going to read you some figures now because you deserve to know what's going on in this country. This is how it affects the NHS, OK? This is how it affects the NHS. I'm going to give you the figures for September of deaths in this country. Deaths due to dementia, 4,449. Deaths due to heart disease, 4,104. Deaths due to lung cancer, 2,324. And all of this is subject to the fact that ordinary patients couldn't get to hospitals, couldn't get to their referrals because hospitals had basically shifted all the resources to treating COVID-19 and people were frightened to go to those hospitals. Here's a few more of those figures, OK? Strokes and blood, co- blood clots. Deaths in September, 2,120. Respiratory diseases, 1,829. Colon cancer, 1,285. I could go on and on and on, but I'll get down to the 10th... Uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. The 11th um, most... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? The 11th cause of deaths during September, the 11th most prevalent cause of deaths in September was COVID-19, 690. 690, compared to those figures I've just read to you. Dementia at the top, 4,449. What on earth are we doing? What on earth are we doing? Largely ignoring those people who've got all those serious diseases. I'm not saying that COVID's not a serious disease, but to throw the, you know, the kitchen sink and everything else at it at the expense of the other problems we've got in this country in terms of health care is absolutely mad. I would say infection rates are low. For the week up to October 27th, the transmission rate in Folkestone and Hythe was 44 cases per 100,000 on the Isle of Wight, Near to where I live, it was 28, and in South Somerset, it was 34. This compares to rates of 500 in places like Knowsley and Rochdale. So why have we locked the whole country down? Why are we saying we're all going to be treated the same? It's, it's, it's simply not on.